Hi there, Steve Kaufman here, and uh, today I it's going to be a bit of a ramble. I warn you ahead of time, some semi-political uh, opinions, but I want to talk about what is the best accent to have, the best form of a language to have. This comes up a lot. It comes up a lot with regard to French, Portuguese, Spanish, English, you know, Beijing Mandarin versus other forms of Mandarin. Uh, you know, Kansai Ben as opposed to the more standard NHK Japanese. And I'm sure it's true in a whole bunch of other languages that I don't speak or don't speak very well. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I follow this organization called the Canadian Parents for French. I follow them because I'm interested in French education in Canada. I think it's important that um, you know, I like, let's say, I shouldn't say that it's important, but I like the fact that Canada is bilingual. I like the fact that more and more Canadians, it isn't true that more and more Canadians speak French, but I, I would like to see more and more Canadians speak French. I think they can do so uh, without the government spending, you know, six, seven hundred million dollars a year on futile, bloated government programs. So I'm in favor of that. But anyway, I get this questionnaire about language insecurity and there's some kind of a Canadian strategy for language insecurity. And there's a whole bunch of questions in this questionnaire about whether I feel insecure using my French in my family, my place of work, my this, that, and the other. So then I look up language insecurity on Google and it turns out that it has to do with people who feel insecure about the way they speak a language. It may be because they're insecure about their uh, you know, usage, grammar, it may be insecurity over their accent, it could be any number of things that make people feel insecure in using their language. Now, uh, and then one of the reports that I read says that, you know, there should be, language should be a safe space and all this stuff. To me, all of this is quite silly. Uh, in the case of a language that we learn that's not our native language, actually we have a fair amount of freedom to choose the accent that we like the best. And I find myself that if I'm in Latin America, even though I'm used to speaking Spanish, like Spanish from Spain with La Feta, Barcelona, down there I'll sometimes drop that because, you know, it might make them feel a little bit, I don't know, I just feel a bit self-conscious. So I. Sometimes, if I'm speaking very quickly, that f will be there, and if not, I might just drop it. Um, the same in, 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 I was in Brazil, so my, you know, I, I get to, it's more it's sort of uh, cidade for city. Now, when we go to Portugal, I'll probably drop that a little bit. Uh, when I lived in France, if I was in southern France for any length of time, I would sound more like a person from southern France. If I go to Quebec, pretty soon I start to sound more like a Quebecois. We're more flexible. In our native language, it's, it's more hardwired and therefore we tend to stay with the accent that we grew up with. Um, now, and also there are people who speak very grammatically incorrect English. Um, I traveled with a couple, my wife and I traveled with this couple and it was, I would have went, I would have came, which are grammatically incorrect. I don't think they feel insecure they just speak that way. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, it's a bit like, okay, if, if you are fat uh, or you, uh, you know, you have white hair and you want to change it to the diet or you want to diet, D-I-E-T, uh, to look thinner, that makes you feel better, go for it. If you don't like the way you speak, you can by doing a lot of reading and listening and focusing on it, you could change it. Or you simply say, that's who I am and that's good enough. But the idea that some government organization, and this Parents for French in Canada, is massively subsidized by the federal government. You know, if you have an independent group, Parents for French, pooling their funds, doing good stuff, that's great. Once they start going to the government for funding, I lose interest in them. And if they're going to be part of a national strategy to combat linguistic insecurity, that totally takes me off because there is no perfect world. There is no perfection. And every attempt to impose perfection ends up basically limiting people's freedom or limiting their 
need to take, to take responsibility for themselves. So, you know, is there a perfect form of Chinese? If you want to sound like people from Beijing, you just listen to a lot of people from Beijing. If you are living in Taiwan, and I know lots of people who learned their Chinese in Taiwan, they will A, be influenced by what they hear around them, and B, they will probably be less self-conscious speaking with a Taiwanese accent. And it's possible that they can flip back and forth. If they're on the mainland, they might feel self-conscious with a Taiwanese accent, and they can either live with that or change it. So th there's no situation where you're always going to feel secure. No government organization is going to make you feel more secure. You make certain decisions. I think in so far as the best form of a language to learn, uh, you have less choice if you grew up somewhere and you speak that way. You grew up in London or you grew up in Australia. That's how you speak, period. You're not likely to change it. You probably feel quite comfortable and proud speaking that way. That's who you are. If you don't like having that persona, you can change it. But if we're learning another language, then uh, we pick the one that works for us. I don't think there's any objectively more prestigious way of speaking a language. If you are working and living in Quebec, you're going to learn Quebecois French. Uh, if you are working and living in Scotland, I don't know if in Scotland, if the real Scottish brogue is more prestigious than some kind of a, you know, Queen's English, but whatever it is, you choose the one to imitate and you do it. And you don't need some group to look into the causes of linguistic insecurity sending out this questionnaire, which they obviously got government funding for, asking a bunch of stupid questions. Uh, the bigger thing is, uh, I think a lot of people say Anglophones who don't speak French very well, they feel insecure because when they speak French, say uh, in the workplace, they don't really speak the language well, they don't really understand what people are saying, they have trouble expressing themselves, they're going to feel insecure. There is only one solution for that, and that is to improve your French in that case, right? So most of these situations are very much in our control, don't require government funding, government programs, and all the rest of it. And uh, I think it's just a matter of choosing whatever form of the language, accent you consider to be the most useful. I mean, if you're in an environment where you're, say you're playing, I don't know, if you're playing basketball and most of your teammates are Afro-American and and uh, you know you're an immigrant or not you know you're a foreign player from Poland you may find that the most prestigious uh, form of English is that English that's spoken by a lot of your teammates if in fact they do speak the sort of whatever they call it ebonics and stuff like that however by the same token an African American who grew up in an area where they spoke the sort of ebonics may find that a more standard form uh, you know, the more widespread on the sort of within the United States form of English might be more advantageous uh, in terms of academic opportunity or professional opportunity. And then that person will make the decision either to stay with what they grew up with, if that was in fact they grew up with more of an Ebonics type, um, you know, English, or they may move closer to uh, the sort of standard form while maintaining sort of some inflections that reflect, you know, who they are. And typically that's what we see on television when they have a, a you know, African-American commentators or, or uh, you know, experts uh, expounding on different subjects. So all of this thing, it, all of it, this is to say that do whatever you think is right, take the responsibility on yourself and don't expect governments or government funded organizations to impose solutions. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.